<clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. Still in the kitchen. Um, still looking after young puppies who are asleep right now. Uh, until they're old enough to come upstairs with me and not chew through every cable in my studio. Um, we're down here, down here in the kitchen. And today I want to talk about some, uh, some basic Buddhism, some hardcore Buddhism, some necessary Buddhism, some Buddhism ideas that have uh, um, really struck me lately, how elegant these primary teachings are are the, the, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. And the idea that within those two is this self-referential recursion. Is that what I mean? A Mobius strip? Is that what I mean? I'm not sure. Here's what I mean. So, um, the Four Noble Truths. The Fourth Noble Truth is the answer. Um, it is that following the Eightfold Path will uh, cause the cessation of suffering. The first three noble truths about the identification, the realization, the understanding of, of suffering and its causes, and that there, is a, that there is a solution. And then the fourth noble truth is the solution is to follow the Eightfold Path. So first, the first noble truth, uh, all conditioned phenomena are unsatisfactory. Life is suffering. You know, the translation of that is a, is a, is a tough one uh, because life is suffering is, is a bit off-putting. I, I like the way that Surya Das talks about it, the, the, the definition of dukkha, the, 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 the word, yeah, it's suffering, but it's unsatisfying. And and more specifically, he will say, the unenlightened life is inherently unsatisfying. It's inherently unsatisfying because of the nature of conditioned phenomena and the realization of those two um, will lead to the direct cessation of suffering through the fourth noble truth, the path. The path to the cessation of suffering is the Eightfold the Eightfold Way, the Middle Way, the Eightfold Path. Now, the first of the eight um, steps on the Eightfold Path is right view, or right wisdom, or wise view, or again, correct view. This, this term, right view, in our culture, our reading, can sound as if there's a an implied morality that the right view is a um, proscribed set of behaviors or a proscribed set of thoughts beliefs and uh, it is not that it is um, in fact the first noble truth the it is it, the, the 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 first step on the eightfold path is to determine the true nature of of phenomena the true nature of experience the true nature of our habituation in this human form that resides in samsara all of that is right view and from that the other um, the other steps of the eightfold path unfold right intention right speech right, right action livelihood. The Eightfold Path is the path to nirvana, the cessation of suffering. The realize, But it begins with the realization of the nature of phenomenon, which is the first noble truth. So there's this connection, this pivot point built in. The, the fourth noble truth contains the Eightfold Path, the Eightfold Path refers back. Um, I find that so elegant and so beautiful how the thoughts circulate around 
you know, the Dharma thoughts, the Dharma reflection through this core teaching. Um, I can't really think of any other word except beautiful and, and elegant and compelling and inspiring. It also, I think, ties in, and this, also, this again comes from listening to a lot of Surya Das and his, um, his teachings. Surya Das talks about the, the practices of um, uh, the foundational practices, what, what our Tibetan teacher calls nundro, um, the, the um, consideration of impermanence, um, guru yoga, all of the practices that we can do, mindfulness, um, steps along the way to uh, a realization of nirvana, climbing up the mountain, sorry, as calls it. But then at the same time, there is the uh, immediate realization, there is the capacity for instant attainment of natural state. Attainment meaning realization, familiarity with, and then um, sort of clear-eyed viewing as it is. All of the teachings around let it be, leave it as it is, are based on this awakening to the instant moment. But here's the thing, and, and this is some of my work and consideration over the last few months, is how to understand these two together. And um, the, the swooping down moment of instant familiarity and realization. Sorry, let me restate that. The swooping down moment that leads to instant realization of natural state. From that moment, actions of the Buddha are necessary. And those actions of the Buddha are the Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is the, the, the path of action that stems from natural state. The Eightfold Path is also the path to gradually become familiar with that, with that state. And so there's this, again, built-in swirly, loopy cadence recursion between with, with the Eightfold Path, either to be seen as uh, steps towards some gradual realization or steps to be taken unfolding from a, a sudden moment of awakening or both. And then within the teachings, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, a similar structure. Either steps to be taken as the natural unfolding or steps to be taken to arrive, or both. Anyway, let me uh, keep it a bit short today. Uh, have a good morning. I, uh, I'll be back on Thursday. Please like, subscribe, all that, all that stuff. This is a new channel. You see, this probably still only. Look down. Where is it? Down there probably still only 10 or 12 subscribers. So you could be one of the early adopters. And if you are, then go ahead and share, share, share this. Um, any questions, drop me a note, zenglop at gmail.com. That's Z-E-N-G-L-O-P, zenglop. Um, and uh, keep your words about you. <laughs>